So we continue and try to develop the <coughs> design as asked in the previous lecture. So there will be four chips. I draw it with small size because we have to combine it. While numbering also we follow some convention because numbering in digital starts with zero. Just like active low, there is one simple convention again. There are some inherent advantages also that we start with numbering from zero. So, when we number them from 0, this is memory cell number 0, we number them from 0 onwards, not from 1. So, cell number 0, cell number 1, cell number 2 and cell number 3. I will give them binary numbers also, you will understand them why. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Data line, each of them is having what now? Each of these, all four chips together will be my four byte memory cell. Each of the chip is having eight data lines. So, now while numbering, you must be aware that most of you must be somewhat exposed to computers maybe because of your acute interest or because of the fashion <coughs> you are aware of the concept of local and global variables means global variables are globally known by the same name whereas uh, when we talk about local, <coughs> local variables <coughs> same name refers to different people and in different contexts so this is D7 of this, this is D0 of this chip, this is D7 of this chip, <coughs> then <coughs> these are as said that in the design we were told that there should be 8 data lines. So these are 8 data lines of the entire chip, 8 data lines of the 4 byte memory cell. Then this D7 should come here, this D7 should also come here, this D7 should also come here and this D7 should also come here. So D7 of all, remember this is the crux of the entire discussion which I was imposing upon you that D7 of all four memory cells is to be combined and to be a single D7 and obviously care <coughs> must be taken that only one memory cell D7 should be accurate at a time means if I want to read that they should give the data and if I want to write something here, then this data should be written only in this chip and not in the other chips. So D7 of all is made combined and same is with D0 of all is also combined with the common D0 pin. And the same is with all remaining pins. Remaining. Then each of them is having read bar and write bar. <coughs> each of them is having read bar it is shown like this is a convention read bar I give insights local way read bar and write bar read bar and write bar read bar Obviously, there will be one common read bar for the entire memory chip and one common write bar. 
सो रीड पावर ऑफ ऑल इज मेड कॉमन राइट पावर ऑफ ऑल इज ऑल्सो मेड कॉमन नो प्रॉब्लम बट ओनली वन चिप इज टू बी सिलेक्टेड दैट इज द क्रक्स and now the big design is big design is each of them is having one cs bar supply lines we don't show each of them is having one cs bar cs bar cs bar This I will call as CS bar zero because it's chip zero. This I will call as CS bar one. This I will call as CS bar two. This I will call as CS bar three. And what additionally I am told to that I have got I have got this as entire CS bar for this four byte chip and. Two lines called address lines A one A zero. Then what should be the logic based on this? If you are enough smart, then it sh you should understand on your own that designing a four byte memory cell which will be having an access window of eight data lines only that is through only these eight data lines i should be i that is the user should be able to access either this or this or this or this memory location at one at a time either for the purpose of reading or writing and that is which location is now to be decided by the address lines how many address lines are there two address lines two address lines are having how many combinations which we can very easily write it is a very simple logic a1 a0 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 And cell number, cell number zero, cell number one, cell number two, cell number three. <coughs> so, if a one, a zero are zero zero, if a one, a zero are zero zero, then this should become zero, and all these should be one. Then what? Why this cell bar is provided? Now, this is a four byte memory cell. <coughs> see the what we can say desire to grow big desire to grow big is endless now i said that what i had a single byte memory cell what i told prepare one four byte memory cell then tomorrow i will say if you have such four byte memory cells in multiple numbers prepare A bigger cell again, so there should be a provision that it may be some time that none of them see if if one more if one more like this is to overlay, then there would be eight byte memory cell. So these four of the first and then these four of the next may come. So that time there may be a need that. I don't want to select any one of them, so that is available when this CS bar is one. So this is entire CS bar. So if this CS bar is zero, 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 and if this entire CS bar is one, then irrespective of these address lines, none is selected. None is selected. So. The how many inputs are there for the system? One, two, and three. How many outputs I want? One, two, three.
3 and 4. How are the outputs? The out of this is this is enable line and these two are select lines. Two select lines, four output lines. One becomes low and one is selected and selected becomes low. This is called as decoder or demultiple. Now there is, uh, we don't want to take your time in unnecessary distinctive discussion which is irrelevant now. So the decoder we talk of 2 as to 4 decoder. Demultiplexer word we don't use. Those who want to have detailed study, if they get some additional time, then they may have, otherwise not. So, a 2 as to 4 decoder is, is what? It is having two select lines called as A or S1, S0, four output lines Y0 bar, Y1 bar y2 bar y3 bar. obviously supply lines we don't show and one is called as enable bar or chipstick bar both are having same logic just enabling so this en bar s1 s0 y0 bar y1 bar y2 bar y3 bar. This is the truth table. <coughs> the truth table of this 2 as to 4 decode is very simple. It tells that if if this EN bar is 1, irrespective of this, all outputs are deactivated, not selected. If this EN bar is 0, 0, 0, you select Y0, others are 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, So this 2 as to 4 decoder is put A1, A0 act as S1, S0 This chips like bar acts as this EN bar And this Y0, Y1, Y2, Y3 bar act as CS0 bar, CS1 bar, CS2 bar, CS3 bar Right? So you put a, a suitable decoder is CS bar I will show you the top This is 2 as to 4 decoder And this is Y0 bar, this is Y1 bar, this is Y2 bar, and this is Y3 bar. So, <coughs> remember very carefully now. That a 4 byte memory cell is having two address lines with the help of two address lines and a 2 as to 4 decoder. You generate four select lines, sorry, you generate four output with two select lines, which are address lines, and 2 as to 4 decoder. You generate four output lines. These four output lines are such that maximum one of them remember I'm, my words very carefully maximum one of them is selected at a time means it is likely that none of them may be selected if this decoder itself is disabled so if this chip is to be selected then A1, A0 select one of these four locations which will communicate with this so in general what we have got with all these things, we have got a 4 byte memory cell. So, the 4 byte memory cell is 
since this is recorded one, there is no problem of rubbing it immediately. You can rewind and pause and then see it and then note down. Presuming that you are watching at least for the first time. Then the question of rewinding comes. Anyway, that uh, I don't claim that if you don't watch these lectures, you will understand nothing. But the crux is very important, which I cover, so it is explained that you should watch. But if you are otherwise competent enough and able to understand something independently by on your own or watching something else, then it should not matter for a, a teacher. The teacher should not uh, unnecessarily make hype of his own lectures to increase his own importance. Means teacher should be ex should be exclusive and should not make him exclusive. So in general, what we have got a four byte memory cell. So supply lines we don't show. So eight data D seven to D zero chip select bar read bar write bar and two address lines A one D zero. So it is four byte DC. So in general now, you can construct, I hope, that there is no need for us to spend time in, again going to minor details, in general, you can construct, uh, you will say, will, will there be a 5 byte memory cell? Yes, but unless it's, now you consider that because of this decoder, you know by the logic that uh, n bit combination, if you are using n binary bits, then you have got 2 raised to n combinations. So it is always better to have a memory cell which is of the size 2 raised to n bytes. So the size 2 raised to n bytes. So in general, you can construct a 2 raised to n byte memory cell. 2 raised to n byte memory cell. It is read write memory, which is having eight data lines D7 to D0. Obviously, one read bar, one write bar, one CS bar, and can have is a unidirectional a0 to a n minus 1 n address lines if n is 5 then address lines are from a1 to a0 a0 to a4 so 5 address lines means it's 32 byte if 16 address lines are there 16 address lines we normally take for considering one microprocessor so if 16 address lines are there then it would be 2 raised to 16 or 65,536 byte memory cell. And in that case, it would be A for n equal to n equal to 16, the address cell would be A0 to A15. Address cell would be A0 to A15. <coughs> so this is in general a memory so what we did by till now is that for von Neumann what von Neumann was thinking of exact see this memory semiconductor memory was not available when von Neumann has thought of his CPU <coughs> will address the program plus data memory by using address lines, data lines and control lines. 
using a set of address lines, a set of data lines and two control lines, the CPU is able to access the memory. So this is the memory, read drive memory. But remember that this memory, whatever is stored here is available on data lines if you select a particular location, if you select a particular location and activate it bar. The data is not available on pins separately which is accessible to the user. So, in general, this is a memory cell which can be interfaced with computer or microprocessor. So, this is memory which microprocessor can use but not the human being, not the user. Now, if instead of, so now, <coughs> The 60, 2 raised to 16 or 65,536 or we can say 64K, 1023 is 1024, one, that is 2 raised to 10 is called as 1K, 1 convention. So 60, there are 64K or 65,536 memory cells inside. Each of them is selected using A15 to A0. The microprocessor can read or write. And if it reads, it is available. It comes on the data pins. It, it can read. Microsoft can put something on data pins and it gets stored. But these locations are non-transparent, non, -transparent, non well, not use are non-visible for the human being. These this so now what happens? I will show the diagram of CPU and memory and therefore the concept of I.O. actually I.O. device is itself a type of memory but you might have checked seen it in old diagram CPU memory and I.O. devices so this is CPU it is an output lock address lines at, as output lines data lines as bidirectional lines, control lines as output lines. So it interfaces a memory appropriately. This chips like bar is appropriately enabled. So as if we want to interface multiple size memories of different address lines, in order to map with the available addresses of CPU, right now that is not so critical. So read bar, write bar D7 to D0 and A15 to A16. So this is memory 65536. So it is accessible only to the CPU and not to the user. Now, if few locations now what, what is the address address of the memory locations is all zero a15 to a0 0 0 0 0 0 till all 16 zeros now since binary is difficult to be represented in old print media the hexadecimal now they may or otherwise hexadecimal might hexadecimal is number system might not have been developed if the things which are available today were available then it is it was developed so as to easy to communicate using less number of space so memory locations are 0 0 0 0 h to f f f f h this all 16 zeros to all 16 ones these are the memory locations. Now it is also likely that of these memory locations, few last part of few memory locations, these 8 and these 8, you can bring the pins out or you can 4 let us say, last only 8. So 4 and 4. So you can have 
these are output pins and these are input pins. So, what this is called as I.O. port. What is I.O. port? Microprocessor communicates it just like a memory. It writes something. If it writes something and that when it writes into a read memory location that makes an impact of storing but that is not seen for me. But if it output port there are 8 pins, 8 pins, 8 pins, 8 pins. So there are 4 output ports. If I write something here, then these pins become 1 and 0. If I write something else, these get again changed. If I read something, if I might read something from here, I don't know what it is reading. But if there are 4 input, 8 input lines, these are 8 different input lines, there are 8 different input lines, there are 8 different input lines. So this is called as output port 0, output port 1, output port 2, output port 3 like input port 1, input port 2, input port 3, input port 4 so input and output ports are just like memory location but its pins are accessible to human being output port the system makes it 1 and 0 which the human being can use and input port means human being keeps it 1 and 0 which microprocessor can read. So I.O. ports are just like memory locations not at all different. Only difference is that micro it, these are accessible to the human being. So this is the CPU memory interface including I.O.s as thought by one human. 75 years back which we are still studying today so i hope that the sufficient introduction is met uh, in the next lecture we shall continue further thank you